Welcome to the Summit here on Midwest Sports Net. Hi, I'm Joey McWilliams. I'm glad you're along for the ride with me today. And we are getting to visit with a new head coach and uh, one of the Division II programs in our footprint, and that is Shane Pabin, who is now taking the job at Shadron State. And Coach, first off, congratulations on, on the new gig. Thanks. I hey, appreciate you having me on, and uh, thank you very much. Very excited about the opportunity here at Shadron. Well, you're, you're not unfamiliar with, I'm sure, recruiting in the state. And, of course, we'll get to that here in just a moment. But spending 11 seasons in Bellevue and a pretty successful time there as well. Talk about your, your previous stop coming into this one. Yeah, I had a great opportunity to coach at Bellevue University for 11 seasons. Uh, we had, uh, I hate talking about myself, but we had a lot of success, you know, going to 10 national tournaments and winning 10 uh, conference titles in a row and, you know, a couple final four runs as we went there and just had a tremendous experience and saw a lot of young men uh, get their uh, college degrees and first one for their families. So there's so many neat experiences there that I will always treasure. Well, and, you know, the memories are part of it too, Coach. And, and uh, I don't mind you talking about yourself. That's fine. Obviously, success is one of those things that uh, it's fun to get to visit about too. And, you know, I look at numbers like 275 and 100 you know, through 11 seasons, that's that's an average of 25 and, and 9 right there. Uh, you finish up 24 and 8 this last season. And I realize, you know, all basketball all across the board was cut a little bit short due to uh, the thing we'll not talk about right now on the air. But still, uh, you know, a, a very good average per year. Coach, That that's very impressive. Well, you come into a new situation now, and I don't know if you could have gone much farther away from where you were and still be in the state of Nebraska to get to, to coach at a university from Omaha to Shadron. Uh, what in, what brought you to this new situation? Well, uh, I was, I've known coach Reed, uh, who left for a good opportunity at Northern Colorado with coach Smiley and they're college teammates and just talking to him, uh, you know, because the first question you talked to Houston and obviously he wanted to, win more games while I was here, you know, he just asked the question, can you be successful at that school or university? And he said, didn't even hesitate. Yes. He goes, the opportunity with the, we have great facilities. Uh, Jim's five years old, great video board. Uh, They've just revamped uh, everything. And he really went into details about the program, like the budget, the scholarshiping and how much it's changed in the last five years. And he just had bad luck last year, injuries. You know, I think they lost like six or six to eight games within like basically one possession game without the free throws. Uh, you know, and they just, you know, had, had a hard luck season that way. And they're really kind of ready to break through, uh, sit down with the football coach. Uh, the nice thing is I had a good relationship with our baseball coach at Bellevue and their fo- the football coach and him were uh, roommates in, when they were GAs here together at Shadron. So, he gave me more details, kind of the meat, uh, kind of how the sausage is made for each university. And, you know, Shadron really wants to be successful. Uh, and you could just tell through the administration and the other coaches that were on the committee. So they got me really excited uh, about the job and the opportunity to turn around a program and have some success here. Obviously, the league is not going to be, they're not going to lay down for us. Um, you know, Colorado School Mines has been the most traditional, but Metro State has great history. Uh, Mesa, they kind of, they've all kind of had some good runs uh, the last 10 years. Probably Mines have been the most consistent, but even Black Hill State and uh, uh, South Dakota School Mines have had great seasons last year. So it's going to be, you know, tough sledding, but, you know, anything worth anybody's wild is shouldn't be easy. It's, you know, get some hard work done and hopefully turn this program around. I, I understand. We're speaking now with Coach Shane Pabin, the new head men's basketball coach at Shadron State. And Coach, as you're talking then about the RMAC, I, you know, you're going to to have a, a schedule that's made up well, pretty much exclusively of conference play. Really not a lot of time to get your feet under you before you get, get into the, you know, the quote unquote, the games that matter. Unfortunately, we get thrown to the dogs right away. Uh, <laughs> and I think we're moving a game. Uh, our first opening weekend is going to move to like mid mid-November and it's going to be Colorado School of Mines and Regis. I think they're going to be at home. So I should, I think it's Coach Pearl or uh, at Regis in the O'Brady at Regis and the Mines coach don't embarrass me too much in that opening weekend at home. So (laughs) 
it's, yeah, it's it's going to be a quick welcome to I think I'm, I'm not for certain, but I think Colorado School Mines might be the preseason favorite. So we'll we'll see how good we are right away. But it's you know, like I said, it's a challenge and it, it shouldn't be easy. It's going to be fun though. Coach, I talked about recruiting in the state of Nebraska, and I know that you're no stranger to that. Although uh, moving to a, a you know a different portion of the state right now, and and uh, dealing with a different affiliation from NAI to Division Two, although the players they're still the players, and and they're the ones you want to to bring in. Uh, one of the things I, I thought was nice that, that you had said in a previous interview, talking about recruiting. That you know, it, it would be good to be able to recruit four and five year players to to get kids from high school, but you you basically have to adapt to what is there at the time. So you, you may be able to get some junior college players, may get some some high school kids, you may get some transfer players as well. Talk about recruiting right now. Uh, recruiting obviously is lifeblood for any program. Your players make your program. I've never scored a basket. Uh, in the last you know, 23 years of coaching. So the players get all the credit. Uh, and I truly believe that. So recruiting is your lifeblood. And I know a lot of coaches believe in that. Uh, recruiting here, it, it's obviously the location. It, it's, it, it's a place where you can really focus in on school, getting a degree and playing basketball and getting a lot better. Uh, we're not gonna have like a lot of the, uh, the nightlight stuff, but it keeps you out of trouble too. And there's going to be an opportunity to get guys in here to kind of really bond uh, and develop really good relationships. And with, I think anybody with college basketball ties now understands the dynamic and the culture of the landscape of college basketball has changed so much in the last probably five years, let alone the last 10, where people are, there's, there's more freedom for them to transfer and move around. Uh, and so you have to adjust uh, the, I, I'm afraid the era of like getting the four and five year guys, you know, unless you have a really particular university, it's just a challenge. I mean, they don't stay at Duke and Kentucky for four or five years anymore. So <laughs> it's just, it, you, you can't take it personally, but it's just like, you have to be able to adapt and change. Uh, we still want to recruit high school guys and develop those guys, but they're probably going to be your recruiting off potential. And those guys are probably like coming in an immediate impact. You know, they're going to be tougher to get, you know, we'll try, but it's not like you do, you just you know, hit your wagon to any one set, you know, like, cause now you got high school kids, you got kids from prep school, you get from JUCO, uh, you get kids in the NCAA portal. So you've got all these different options you have to look at. And I think, you know, it's just like making a, you know, making dinner. You want to have different, you want to have a variety of guys from probably different areas of that. So recruiting has to be adjusted to that. So, and we're banging on different doors and banging, I guess, banging the bushes too, to see what's available for us right now this summer. Well, when, when you get those in and, and the, uh, the roster that, that you finally compile then, I know they're going to be looking to you when, when people see, you know, a coach Pabin team, what do they generally expect to see on the court? Uh, I mean, like, I think probably everyone would say this, but I want them to understand that, you know, when they see a coach Pavin coach team is that they're just going to work really hard. They're going to compete. They're, they're not going to go out there and just kind of be a kind of loosey goosey. They're going to compete. We're going to play really good defense and rebound and try to take really good shots to make, you know, the whole philosophy really simple for everyone to understand real quick. And if that is what the fan base and people can see, I'd be really proud of that because that means they're buying in and we're probably getting better as a program. Coach, I think one of the things that has stand out to me in, in uh, looking into what you've done prior and, and then coming into your now your era at Shadron is uh, you're looking about at the players as complete players too, and it's not just what all they do on the court, but but how they continue and transition into life. Can you talk about that? Yeah, that's kind of the one thing I tell guys that we recruit. If you have no interest of like getting your degree, it's probably not a good place for you to come. It's just because we will expect you to be on time, go to class and earn your degree. Cause we will talk about how, what your goal is after basketball, when the ball stops bouncing. And I want them to have hopes and dreams, go overseas and play if they can have that opportunity and milk your athletic abilities as long as humanly possible. But father time is undefeated. So what are you gonna do next? And if that next is 10 years from now, or is it 10 months from now, you just 
you know, put that in their minds and have thoughts and conversations about them as human beings because they're more than just basketball players. They're human beings. They're hopefully going to be good fathers and husbands and, you know, be good community leaders and good citizens of the United States. So if you talk about that stuff and just have conversations and know that, you know, you might be playing basketball for me right now but i want them to be able to have a conversation about life you know one thing that was neat uh when i took this job that day one of my former players at bellevue texted me and he didn't realize i took this job it was just announced and he texted me he was just really proud he bought his first car and by himself brand new car and i tell him like no it's probably not going to make espn or cnn or whatever news outlet you enjoy but it's a big thrill when you do this for the first time, you know, you buy that first house, you get engaged, have a child, uh, you know, those things you want to share with people that will appreciate it. And so it's really neat. And he texted like two hours later, he's like, coach, I'm so sorry. I didn't know you took that. <laughs> and I was like, no man, don't worry about it. It's like, I'm just happy you got a new, new ride. And I think I joked around about the color or something, but you know, it's those get they're, they're, they're going to be grown men and, you know, hopefully there, I want to see them be good fathers and husbands too. Well, coach that, and, and you've made my day with that story. I think that's fantastic. And, and those are the, the great things in life. And, you know, the fact that, that a, a, a former player would share with his coach, it, it says a lot about who you are, uh, not only as a coach, but as a person. So I appreciate that in you. Well, the season's going to get underway in November and it's going to be an all RMAC schedule. So, Coach, good luck as uh, you head out there, and and uh, may the, f- the pieces fall into place for you in this first season and beyond. Yeah, we're excited. Uh, obviously, we're just banging the bushes for recruiting because with the COVID stuff, it's uh, not a lot of campus stuff going on. You can't be on the open roads. So you're on the phone a lot. So, But it's been a great opportunity, and we're excited to have it. I think my staff and I are just ready to get going and compete. Excuse me. And – Appreciate the opportunity to have me on and have a conversation about Shatter and basketball. Coach Shane Pabin, thank you again for being with me today here on the summit. And I appreciate all of you for watching. Please do subscribe to this channel. It is Midwest Sports Net, and uh, we are continuing our coverage of small college athletics around the Midwest. So thanks again, Coach Pabin. God bless you all, and have a great day.